It's all about fearless expression, and it's about having an honest dialogue about mental health. So today I'm going to share with you what it's like for me personally, what it feels like, uh, what my days are like, what my thoughts are like, routine is like while living with an anxiety disorder. Is my life ruined? Can I ever be normal? Will I ever be happy? In this video, I'm going to share what it's like living with an anxiety disorder. I am diagnosed, officially diagnosed by a psychiatrist. I have a beautiful piece of paper that says Scott suffers from GAD baby. Now he didn't write baby in the note, but hey, I can label myself like this. I don't know for the sake of the video, let's not get into that. But yeah, I, I suffer from anxiety and uh, labeling. I, pfft, I don't even want. So in this video, I'm going to describe uh, what it's like, what it feels like. And the, the intention here is to maybe help you out. Maybe you do suffer from anxiety or maybe you know someone or love someone who struggles with anxiety and maybe is even diagnosed and you'd like to understand them a little better and get a little closer to them. Because we know that, hey, everybody's different in their diagnoses. Everyone's different in how they feel. But with anxiety and mental illness, we can categorize and we can really check off quite a few symptoms that nearly everyone will experience with these disorders, especially an anxiety disorder. So I'm gonna just talk about uh, what anxiety feels like and what it's like living with this. Will I ever live a normal life? Well, you're about to find out. Please stick around. Here's just a message from our sponsor here and uh, stay tuned for more. This video is brought to you by Nalgene. Fill up your water bottle with water or any liquid. It actually holds any liquid, not just water, which is pretty cool about these. Uh, holds any liquid, tight seal, and what you do is it's, it's pretty simple. Unscrew the cap, and it, it basically works like that every time. Again, water's in here, but you can use any liquid you'd like. That's not actually the sponsor, but if you'd like to sponsor me and uh, join our club here on Depression to Expression, the Patreon link is in the description below. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Okay, I'll start, I'll start talking about sad stuff. So living with anxiety, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun. It... it it's ruined relationships. It's it's ruined, uh, you know, social gatherings. It's 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 completely um, taken away the enjoyment of just being alone sometimes. But there's one thing I want to discuss, and that's uncertainty. Living with an anxiety disorder is. Um, oh, I gotta turn that fan off. Ah, but I'm so in focus. Um, living with an anxiety disorder, you have to be content and be able to deal with this this idea of uncertainty, this fact of uncertainty, because I don't know when anxiety is going to hit me. I don't know when I'm going to have a panic attack. Yes, there are triggers that, that are there, but the majority of the time I could literally just wake up and, and it's like God has a spotlight on me and the world has this spotlight and everyone's watching and I have this pressure to perform. I have this this to-do list, I have things that I need to get done throughout the day and that makes it worse. And it's just this pressure you feel. And uh, you know, at times it's debilitating for sure. Other times you have to fight through it, but you don't get any enjoyment out of the day. Living with an anxiety disorder, but if I frame it this way, living um, or going through the day struggling with anxiety symptoms, there's no enjoyment through that day. You're just trying to get through the day so you can finally hit the bed again and see what happens the next day. And it's very similar with depression as well. It's like my bed is, the, is a safe space for me. And when fighting through depression you, and anxiety, you, you count down the seconds, man. You count down until you're going to be safe again. And when, you know, you've been awake for, let's say, 12 hours and... Uh, and work's done and you're you're finally in bed again. I don't know, for me it's like the anxiety will calm down and it's worse in the mornings, but you you almost dread getting up again uh, because you, you don't want to deal with that anxiety again. You don't want to keep ticking down the seconds. And it's an exhausting experience. And through those days, and it, it's an exhausting existence. And, uh, you know, people who have it... Um, it can be debilitating at times. And years ago, years ago, if I, you know, I do my best to only compare myself with myself. So if I compare myself to five years ago, man, have I come a long way with how I deal with anxiety. And the biggest part is trust. And uh, I, I trust myself 
to be able to deal with anxiety when it comes. I trust my coping skills. I trust my social circle. You know, um, I trust myself. And that's a big part. You trust that you will be able to deal with the uncertainty. You trust yourself to be able to deal with that anxiety, but it wasn't always the case. And listen, life is, <laughs> life, it, uh, it requires you to be anxious at times, right? Anxiety is a good thing, but a disorder is something else. And sometimes when there's nothing to be anxious about, it's just another day, but somehow everything is amplified. Everything I said, everything is in your face. You, you're, it's like you're on stage needing to perform and everything is just bigger and bold and strong and you just feel small and weak and overpowered. That's how it feels, uh, that's what it feels like to me. So again, living with anxiety, um, I know this video is all over the place, but living with an anxiety disorder, again, isn't fun but it's taught me a lot about self-discipline and, um, and how, to, how to really take care of myself in the right ways. It's taught me how to, to deal with you know, the beautiful CBT circle of, of thoughts to feelings to behaviors. It's really forced me to meditate. It's forced me to eat healthier. It's forced me to exercise on a regular basis. It's forced me to do a lot of things that without anxiety and without this uh, diagnosis, I may have not, I probably wouldn't have been motivated to make myself better. Because why would you improve yourself if there's really no need to? Um, people find that very difficult. Um, and obviously I would too. So the anxiety was kind of a kickstarter for me to be like, okay, hold on. What am I doing wrong and what can I do better? And living with anxiety, that is the constant question that I keep asking myself. And that's exhausting too, because I'm not to blame, but at times you always ask yourself, oh, I'm feeling anxious. Well, what did I do wrong and what can I do better right now? You're always in that constant competition and always in that judging phase of yourself that it's difficult to get over that. It is. And I struggle with that from time to time for sure. For sure. So again, it's not fun. It's not fun. And if you can, if you know someone and love someone who, who deals with anxiety, you know, I've done, I've said this in videos before, but just know that it's not their fault you know, it, a, a disorder. If they're feeling anxious, but it's like, man, you just had seven cups of coffee. What do you expect, right? Well, that's a, that's a different scenario. But if they're really struggling and they've been struggling for quite some time and have maybe been diagnosed, don't put that blame on them, eh? It's an extremely difficult thing to deal with and to come to terms with, to say, I, I have a disorder. And you do everything that's in your control and with me, I do everything that's in my control, but sometimes it's not enough. It's not enough. And the anxiety is still there after the exercise, after the meditation, after the therapy. It's all, it, it sometimes just doesn't go away and you just have to sit there and like you're on a roller coaster, you're strapped in and you just gotta ride it. And you do your best to enjoy the ride I do my best to enjoy the ride. Sorry, I'm used to like giving, uh, I'm used to giving advice on these videos. I'm not used to just talking about myself. So I do my best to, to ride that roller coaster, enjoy the ride. But a lot of the time it's just like, do your best to be mindful, to notice the emotion, to escape and detach yourself from these anxious thoughts. But sometimes it's pure hell and the heart's beating and the sweats come in and you feel a, a helpless sense of panic and uncomfortableness and just lack of safety in the world. And, um, and it's actually terrifying, especially with panic disorders. Um, I, I don't have panic attacks often, but panic disorders are, wow. That's another, that's another video and that's another um, range of symptoms for sure. So. You know, I, I could honestly go on about the symptoms and, and what I feel, but maybe I'll do that. Okay, so living with an anxiety disorder is not fun. That's the key word here. It's not fun. And 
I told you that sometimes there's triggers. And actually, let me tell you one trigger, it's change. No human really loves change. We like routine. We like to know what's ahead. We like to be able to predict the future because, okay, I'm gonna wake up and then I have this to do and this to do and I can expect to see that person and be able to do this and be able to do that. Uncertainty and anxiety is that fear of the unknown. It's, it's not knowing. And change really gets me. I remember um, uh, working in the summers I, I would uh, in university years ago. This was, uh, oh my gosh, how many years ago? Set, let's call it seven years ago then. That would be second year, third year. I'd go home, work for the summer, and I'd come back to campus in the fall, in September. So I'd leave around April. That was the last exam. Get in a nice, solid work routine. I'd worked at golf courses and uh, worked at... Um, uh, well, actually, back in the day, Best Buy and then this factory where I made these roof antennas. Anyways, long story. Um, but I would go back to campus after those four months and I'd be out for a week. Now, it, it may have been the exact same house, same town I would be in for, for uh, six months, right? Same, same professor sometimes, same group of friends. But you don't see some of these people for four months you detach yourself from that routine, I come back, I'm out for four months. Or sorry, four months. I'm out for a week. And, uh, and that was debilitating. That changed. And even when I uh, moved into this condo a few years ago, I was out for a few weeks, for sure. Just waking up, just the anxiety. My baseline, the anxiety spikes, but it stays for weeks at a time. And again, you do everything you can, but it's, it's a gross feeling. It's a dirty feeling. And it's not fun to deal with. It's not. It's an extra thing you have to deal with. You have work, you have your family, you have your relationships. And it's just that, that extra thing on top that you always are mindful of. And it's sometimes a lot of, it's, you know what, a lot of times it's in the back of your mind being like, okay, I'm going out. Uh, you know, what if this happens? All right, am I prepared if, if I get anxious? You know, do I have an exit strategy or am I prepared to deal with it in the moment? Do I have people I can trust? Do I trust myself in that moment? Is the environment safe? It can be debilitating just because it's always in the back of your mind and it's this constant thought process and cyclical thinking that goes on and on and on. Um, but I, I think change is a trigger for me. Big change, big change. Um, so that's when it gets debilitating, but honestly, uh, there are way more good days than not for me. Living with anxiety is, uh, not as debilitating and not as bad as it used to be. That is for sure. That is for sure. And I have a lot of people to thank for that, including all of you watching. I have a lot of people to thank, um, and including all the patrons who, who support this channel. And this is almost a therapy for me too, is discussing this with everyone. Because as you know, it's an honest conversation about mental health or honest dialogue about mental health and it's fearless expression. So I'm fearless in this and uh, it feels good to just be open and to share. And anxiety, it's like you ask anyone in the world, hey, you ever felt anxious? Of course, of course. And the number of diagnosed uh, or people being diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and social anxiety, the trend line is like this, man. It's not going away and it's getting a lot worse and people need help, but it, the conversation is there. You can talk to anyone about this now. I'm not scared to tell anyone that I have clinical depression and generalized anxiety disorder. Not a big deal, not in the slightest. So, it, you know, if that motivates you at all to, to see that I don't give a shit, um, you know, go for it and tell the world. Upload a video, see what happens. You'll most likely get support from a lot of people just like I have. So I have you to thank everyone watching. But finally, and lastly, I'm gonna say this, living with anxiety isn't fun. <laughs> but within the last, uh, the last five years for me, have just, you know, you, you take two steps forward, one step back, but I've just been getting better and better and better. And it's not necessarily that the anxiety goes away. It does lessen a bit and it has, but it's not like it's ever going to go away. 
Mental health is defined with how you deal with the challenge and how, how you embrace the challenge that comes in your life. And are you able to deal with that? Do you have the capacity to deal with challenges that, will, that you will face in life? That's mental health. And my mental health just gets better and better because I am more and more ready to deal with challenges that come up. And uh, I'm showing anxiety who's really boss.